Hello. The objective we're going to cover today is TEK A.2A. This comes from reporting category 2, properties and attributes of functions, which says that you will be able to demonstrate an understanding of the properties and attributes of functions, and more specifically, use the properties and attributes of functions to identify and sketch the general forms of linear y equals x and quadratic y equals x squared parent functions. To begin with, let's take a look at what a parent function is. Parent functions are defined as the most simplistic function that will give you the desired shape of graph. And so here we have the linear function. As you can see from the graph, it forms a straight line okay, that passes here through the origin. Here's your list of table of values, xy values for our, our parent function. Notice here's our origin, 0, 0. And each time x goes up by 1, notice that the y value is also increased by 1. The actual function to represent our parent function is f of x equals x, sometimes written as y equals x when not in function notation. And here's a few of the special characteristics that defines the linear parent function. The line intersects the y-axis at 0, 0. The domain is all real numbers. If you think about it, the graph is going left and right infinitely. The range is also all real numbers because the graph is going up and down infinitely. The second parent function we're going to be familiar with is the quadratic function. Quadratic function forms a parabola for a graph. It also passes through the origin. You can see that here on the table. Now this one, notice it doesn't count up by ones. Each time x goes by uh, 1's, the y value is the x value squared. So that gives us our parent function, f of x equals x squared. And again, the f of x, when not in function notation, can be replaced by y to say y equals x squared. Some of the characteristics that describes this graph, as we said, it intersects the y-axis as 0, 0. For this one, the domain is also all real numbers. Again, look at the graph. It keeps going left and it keeps going right infinitely. The range, however, is all real numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. Since a parabola will never cross over the x-axis when it's the parent function, it starts at zero as its lowest minimum point, and it will only continue to increase or go higher. So that's why it's all real numbers greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to practice this just a little bit. First, we're going to sketch and label a graph of the parent function y equals x. So trying to do this with the mouse can be interesting, but basically we want to make sure our line will pass through the origin. So I'm going to place, let me get a brighter color here, place a dot here at the origin. And we know that our slope for our line is going to go up. y will go up one value every time x goes up one value. So we're going to place a few dots here just to help us get an idea where the graph's going to go. And we also know the true, the same would be true for the reverse. Every time y x goes down by 1, y should also go down by 1. Okay, so now we're simply just going to connect our lines. Our points, rather, to make our line. And we're going to include arrow tips on the ends of our line to show that the graph continues on beyond what we see here. So as we stated, the slope of our graph, slope is rise over run. So every time the graph runs one to the right, it rises one as well. So we have a slope of one over one, or we can just say it has a slope of one. It says what is the y-intercept of the graph? So the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis which is here at the 0, 0, or at the origin. Okay, so this part, this point right here, where it crosses the y-axis, is my y-intercept. Okay, so that is our linear parent function. So next we're going to look at our quadratic parent function. Again, we're going to sketch and label the graph as we did before. As before, we know that the graph starts at 0, Okay, now because the function is x squared, whenever we get place of 1 in there, so when the x is 1, if we square the number, we still get 1. But when x is 2, if we square that number, we actually get 4. 
and when x is 3, if we square that number, meaning 3 times 3, the, x, the y value is 9, which in this example would place us off the graph. Now, with a parabola, the left side is the mirror image of the right side. So when you square negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is going to be positive 1. Negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be positive 4. And again, negative 3 times negative 3 would be positive 9. So we're going to connect our points. And again, use arrowheads to indicate that the graph continues on. Okay, so what is the vertex? So vertex means the place, the point on the parabola where it bends or curves. So on our parabola, and that happens at the origin for our parent function. Okay, what is the line of symmetry? Line of symmetry means the line, the vertical line that can be drawn through our parabola that divides it down the center. So for the parent function, that's going to be right here on the y-axis. Okay. And so we would say that that is at x equals 0. Because if you notice, it passes through the 0 on the x-axis. So that is at x equals 0. All right, so now let's look at a few examples of some different functions. And we're going to put circles around the ones that appear to be linear in shape. And we'll put rectangles around the ones that look quadratic in shape. Okay? So their parent functions, if they're linear, will be y equals x, meaning that the graph will form a line. So one way we can test this is if we have a graphing calculator, we can type these into our y equals function of our graphing calculator and allow it to graph it for us. Now we may have to adjust the window to see the graph a little bit better, but we should be able to determine the shape from what we see. Another way that we can look at if we don't have a graphing calculator is to look at where the x is. All right? As long as the x is not in the denominator, then there's at least a chance it could be linear. If the x is in the denominator, like in this example, then there's no way that that graph can be linear because it's a rational function rather than a linear function. Now with these where the x are not in the denominator where they're up here at the top, you're looking at the exponent on the x. As long as the highest exponent on any x variable in the function is a 1 and nothing higher, then you know you're dealing with a linear function. So here in this first example you see that the x has no exponent so it's understood to have an exponent of 1. So this one, that being the highest exponent, would be a linear function. Here you have a square, so that can't be linear. Here we have no exponents, so again that's a 1, so that's linear. Here the x is in the numerator, so that's okay. So this is still a possibility of a linear function. Again, we look at the x, and it again does not have an exponent, so it's just understood to be 1. So this one is also linear. Okay, down here we got x squared, so that's not going to work. Here if you think about it, you have a square out here, so really this function is saying x minus 4 times x minus 4, right? That's what it means when it says x minus 4 squared. Now, if I simplify that, you know I'm going to have to do x times x because I've got to multiply the first times the first. So the very first thing I'm going to get out of that when I go to simplify it is an x squared. So right away I know this one cannot be linear. Here the x is in the denominator, so that rules it out. And here the x has a square on it, so that rules it out. Now for the quadratic functions, we're looking for, again, is the x in the numerator and the highest exponent can only be a square. All right, so anything higher than a square means it's not quadratic. So here we have one that is a square, so that one would work for quadratic. Here again, we have an x with a square on it, with, so that's our highest exponent, so that one works, that's a quadratic. This one has a square on it, but the x is in the denominator, so that's going to mess that up, so that doesn't work out. Here, if I continue to simplify this, you'll notice that I've got x times negative 4, so that's negative 4x. Then I start here, and I'm going to go negative 4 times x, again is another negative 4x. And finally, negative 4 times negative 4, so that's a positive 16. So again, the highest exponent here on any of these x's is the x squared. So this one is a quadratic. And then this last one, the x is in the numerator, so that's good. So again, it's a square, and so that one's also quadratic. So all these functions with rectangles, these four right here, are all going to have a parent function of y equals x squared. So they all have the same parent function, y equals x squared. These with the circles around them, these three, 
These are all linear, so they all have a parent function of y equals x. A couple more problems here. Um, this one says write an equation to describe the following graph. Now, one of the purposes of a parent function is where you're looking at how the graph is transformed to create new graphs. Transformations could involve um, translating it up or down along the y-axis. It could also involve um, changing the slope of the line. So for this one, let's take a look at where the y-intercept is. Now we're going to try to make this fit the pattern y equals mx plus b. Where b describes the y-intercept and m describes our slope. So here you can see that the y-intercept crosses at y equals 2. So that's going to be my b value. So I'll place a 2 over here. Now, to get the slope, you got to look for the rise of a run. Each time x goes over 1, so every time it runs 1, notice that the y value increases by 1. Okay? So you got run 1, rise 1, run 1, rise 1. So since slope is rise over run, we're going to say that it's 1 over 1, or that simplifies to just 1. So my equation would be y equals 1x plus 2. So my slope was 1, and my y-intercept was at um, 0, 2. Okay, because across the y-axis is 2. All right, so again, we used the parent function, which was y equals x, and we translated it up 2 to create this new graph. Okay, so one more here. Let's look at a quadratic. For this one, again, we want to look at the transformations. So again, notice that the graph shifted up to. So look for anything else that might have changed. Is this still going up by 1 when x goes up by 1? Yes. Is it going up by 4 when x goes up over by 2? 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the, that didn't change. So literally the only thing that changed is this graph shifted up to. So instead of being the function y equals x squared, it's going to be y equals x squared plus 2. Okay, because that's going to cause that graph to shift upward by 2 by putting the plus 2 on the end. So our vertex, again the place where the graph bends, is at 0, 2. It is a minimum point or a maximum point. Well, since it's the lowest point on the graph, that's called a minimum point. Okay, and then again was the line of symmetry? So that's the vertical line that cuts it down the middle. Well, again, it's on the y-axis, so we'd say that's it, where x equals 0. Okay? And so this is basically why we have parent functions. Parent functions kind of give us our starting point for our graphs, for whatever shape we're looking for. And then we can either translate those, either up and down along the y-axis, um, or we can change the slope of those lines. Um, we can do different things to our graphs, which will change the overall function, all right? but it all begins or starts with the parent function at either y equals x for linear graphs or y equals x squared for quadratic graphs. Okay, that concludes our presentation on parent functions.